how's it going? Welcome back to some more Football Manager 2024. I realise I don't need me headphones for this video, so that'll help me ears out a little bit. Uh, hopefully you guys are good. Welcome back to another part of the Everton Project. Uh, today we are back with two big matches in the league. One against uh, Newcastle United before we take on Brentford away from home. And uh, you'll be happy to know we have continued our unbeaten start to the season and it it's interesting obviously we had two draws last time out uh, one against Chelsea one against Leicester and we you know we were quite disappointed to only get two points out of it we didn't play that well but actually it looks all right now now that you've gone on and won two matches uh, we beat West Ham 3-1 John McGinn uh, Rooney Bargy and Marcus Leonardo scoring there we then beat Wolves 1-0 away from home. James Garner on the score sheet in that one. And now all of a sudden we've got 8 points from a possible 12. We are 7th in the table, unbeaten and looking quite solid, certainly defensively. Uh, Meslier uh, has done a good job in goal as well. Uh, and we have actually managed to do a little bit more transfer business just the one signing but it is a good one Tobias Gulkerson uh, or Gullickson who is a 21 year old Norwegian international we've brought him in for 8 million pounds he's already worth 50 to 60 million he looks very very good four star ability five star potential he could be a real top player for us we've brought him in from Bordeaux Glimt um, and just came up on the scout reports uh, one that that we could just go straight in for and that was that was pretty much it uh, very very happy with that uh, Dwight McNeil has gone to Eintracht Frankfurt on an initial loan uh, probably will join them for um, 18 million pounds at the end of the season uh, certainly the board have expected that that's going to happen because they've already allocated that money to the transfer budget so I don't know if that's a little glitch or whether the, the board are just quite happy doing that. No idea so far. But let's have a quick look at squad performances. Top goal scorer is uh, Marcus Leonardo with two. Top assist is Emile Smith-Rowe with two. And top average rating is Marcus Leonardo with a 7.33. And uh, probably seems a little bit harsh that he's not even in the matchday squad today. But uh, let's have a little look at the team lineup that I have selected. I mean, I might go back and put Leonardo on the bench, but who for is, is going to be my question. Uh, but we've got Medsley in goal with Patterson, Maguire, Tarkovsky and Branthwaite in defence. Garner holds the midfield with McGinn and Gullickson coming in in the midfield. Uh, Rooney Bargy and Emile Smith-Rowe will start wide of Anthony Martial up top. Now, Beto is uh, making his return onto the bench. Dominic Calvert-Lewin has returned to fitness as well, so we're, we're giving them both a chance on the bench. And to be fair, Marcus Leonardo wouldn't be ahead of these guys in the pecking order, which is why he's not in the matchday squad today. It, it It is a bit harsh because he has scored goals. I mean, that game against West Ham, he was actually quite poor. Um, just got a, a lucky goal towards the end. And of course, he scored that absolute worldy in the last episode, but he's not looking like somebody that can score consistently. And that's why I'm making the decision I'm making. But uh, yeah, let's get ourselves into it then. First match of the episode against Newcastle, uh, who are now, uh, of course, managed by uh, Julian Nagelsmann. Um, and they're looking good. They've made some good signings. It'll be interesting to see how they get on. I mean, look at that team. It's it's fairly unrecognisable from the real-life team. You've got Kieran Trippier in there still. You've got um, Nick Pope in there, uh, Sandro Tonali, Bruno Gimaraes, uh, Miguel Almiron and Alexander Isak. But other than that, it's a very, very different-looking side. They've got Jorginho in there, Eric Dyer. Uh, quite a lot of signings, to say the least, for Newcastle. And uh, I'm actually intrigued at how much they actually spent in the summer because that is uh, a, a lot of, you know, not expensive players, but probably going to cost you 15, 20 million players. Uh, so, yeah, very interested to see how much they spent. We'll try and remember to do that in a little bit. But, of course, we are at uh, Goodison Park. Uh, this is where we'd expect to, to make our home advantage uh, sort of pay, if you like. And, well, straight away, Rooney Barchi with an incredible free kick. 
very unlucky not to score that, but that's the sort of uh, thing that we can expect from him. He's only going to get better at that sort of thing. I mean, that was just unbelievable. Hits the bar, and uh, straight away we're, we're looking the better side against Newcastle here. Uh, Arsenal, the early leaders there. Liverpool, Tottenham, Man City up there. Leicester doing well on their return to the Premier League. But uh, not too many surprises so far, other than maybe Brighton are at the foot of the table. It would be a shame to see um, De Zerbi go, but uh, knowing football manager logic, he'll be out within the month. The month. Here's Branthwaite, gets it to uh, Meslier now. Here's Tarkovsky getting uh, his first start of the season, I believe. Branthwaite. Back to Tarkovsky. And here's John McGinn. Now to Maguire. And we are playing some nice football here. And uh, here's Rooney on the right-hand side. Rooney still going. And gets it back to Patterson. Now here's McGinn. And it's Rooney Bargy who cuts inside. And that should have been 1-0. It really should have been. But uh, alas, it was not. And uh, well, half an hour's gone. It's still nils each, and we, as I say, we do look the better side. We look the side more likely to score at the moment. But Everton, uh, but Newcastle are are resisting at present. And uh, well, hopefully that doesn't mean they're gonna go and grab a a goal just before half time. Rooney wins it back. Excellent. Here's McGinn finds. Uh, Martial now, Anthony Martial finds Smith Rowe on the left hand side, here's Golkus, Golikson, Golikson scores on his debut, terrific start for him and Emil Smith Rowe moving out wide, looks a lot more comfortable on the wing than through the middle and uh, nice to see Anthony Martial linking up that play as well, good ball through from Smith Rowe and a terrific finish from Golikson and it's 1-0 Everton, let's take a sip of the Apple Tango to celebrate absolutely brilliant and that actually reminds me a few years ago um i think it was in in some football manager content but i'm taking a sip from me tea and uh <laughs> some of the comments section were very very unhappy at the fact that i'd taken a drink mid video uh which which was quite funny but uh anyway one nil up Nice to see uh, Gullickson on the score sheet, and I, I do think he could be a wondrous signing. Really could be, for £8 million as well. Um, that is going to be quite unbelievable. He, he was very insistent that he wanted to use Everton as a stepping stone, but I removed all of his uh, release clauses, all of that, gave him a little bit of extra initial wonga, and he was happy with that. And, well, it's 2-0. Rudy Bargy scores, and our two young players that cost us very little money have scored. And Emil Smith Rowe, our 31 million uh, star summer signing, has set up both of them. And there he is there, and what a lovely pass. Definitely looking much more comfortable on that left hand side. Lovely to see Rudy Bargy score, and it's now 2 0. But yeah, and with that. Uh, uh, Gullickson, I, I did manage to remove all of the uh, release clauses and promises, that sort of thing. So I think he's <coughs> he's gonna be he's gonna be happy here. He's got a five year contract, and worst case scenario, we have to sell him for a hundred million. So what? <laughs> um, yeah, very very happy. Right, I think Beto is gonna come on for the last twenty minutes. We want to see. Uh, if this injury has affected him at all, I'm sure it will have done in some way. Patterson's going to come off. We're going to put Ruben Sanchez on. Hasn't had much of an opportunity to to do much this season. Uh, and I'm going to take Rooney Bargy off and we're going to put Brian Zaragoza on the right-hand side instead of the left. Here's uh, Smith Rowe now. Smith Rowe tries to find Martial, but he wasn't, wasn't having any of it. Tarkovsky with the header. He's had a, a good, solid game today. McGinn. Finds Rooney Bargy. What a ball over the top. And it's going to be Anthony Martial. Oh, it should have been three. It really should have been three. That's going to be Martial's last kick of the game. And, uh, well, Beto comes on now. And imagine Beto comes on and scores. And that's going to be really difficult for Martial to get back into the team. 
That's a great ball forward towards Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe finds Brian. Here's Beto. Oh my God. It's as if. <laughs> it's as if it was written in the script. That was uh that was awesome. And Brian Zaragoza with his first assist. Very, very unselfish from him. He could have went for it himself, but Smith Rowe, what a touch that was. Excellent ball through to Zaragoza. And then there's Beto, and he's only been on the pitch about three minutes. And he's returned from injury. He's scored. And he'll be looking to improve on last season and uh, run Haaland even closer this year. He has McGinn. He whips it in. It's a header away by Joel Matip. He has Brian Zaragoza on the right-hand side. Maguire finds McGinn. Oh, and it's Smith Rowe. Oh, he nearly got the goal. I so deserved. Apparently, it was offside, but... Uh yeah, he, he's deserved a goal today, and it's been a very, very solid performance from us from start to finish. Brian gets it into the middle uh, to wait. He has Ruben Sanchez, gets it forward to Maguire now. Sanchez, Garner, Gullickson, back to Tarkovsky now. And here's McGinn, finds Beto, and here's Brian Zaragoza, and that should have been 4-0. Um... Yeah, but good to see Zaragoza looking good as well since he's come on. It's going to be James Garner now that whips it into the middle, headed away by Kieran Trippier. And a highlight. Let's give the, the boys a bit of a praise. Oh, Trippier free kick. Always going to be dangerous. Header from Isak over the bar. And Meslier uh, will, will breathe a sigh of relief that he's not really been troubled today by this Newcastle United team. And here's Super John McGinn gets it forward to uh, Brian Zaragoza who pushes forward and another shot. He has looked a handful on that right-hand side. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of competition this year between him, Rooney Bargy, Smith Rowe on the left there as well. And there we go, a very, very solid 3-0 victory against a Newcastle side that you would expect will be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. Very good debut for Gullickson as well. Um, Smith Rowe, man of the match. It just felt like that was the coming together together of everybody and uh, yeah got to be happy with that let's have a little look at Newcastle's transfer history then so uh, of course they will have signed some people before um, the end of the year Charlie Sayers was the only one so Lewis Hall has come in for 28 million pounds don't know how much he's actually going to play for Newcastle um, in this save then they've got Andre from Fluminese yeah, again, hasn't started. That's 13.75 million. Then you've got uh, Prestianini. Then Jorginho for 5.75 million from Arsenal. I think that's a, a solid signing. You know, probably wouldn't have got much game time at Arsenal. Uh, Leonardo Leo. Um, Buogiorone Bo 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 from uh, Torino, an Italian centre back. Looks solid. Uh, then Eric Dyer is on loan, actually. I wonder if he's got a mandatory um, sale. No, it doesn't look like it. That's an interesting signing on loan. I, I'm guessing that's for uh, homegrown quarters. And then you've got Maxim Esteve there as well. Now, who's gone out? Jamal Lewis, Harvey Barnes, of course. Jacob Murphy's gone out. Anyone else? Manquillo's gone a, a away for free as well. Um, bit interested, actually. Uh, then they must have signed some players last season. Yeah, Joel Matip there. Uh, Alex Biner. Okay. So, yeah, they did sign quite a lot of players last year. How much did they spend? 66 million, 102 million this year. Not quite as much as I thought. Anyway, let's go and take on Brentford and see if we can keep this up. OK, a couple of changes uh, for the match against Brentford. Uh, we are um, playing Ruben Sanchez, giving him his first start at right back. Uh, we've also brought in Dominic Calvert-Lewin to lead the line up top. Beto still struggling for match fitness. He will probably come on in the second half, but I don't want to push it too hard. I don't want him to get injured. So we're going to give Dominic Calvert-Lewin his first start of the season and see how he gets on. Now, interesting one that came up on the scout reports was Tangai Endombele. 
Uh, of course, former Tottenham player, he's uh, he was released by them. Not entirely sure when that, that happened. Um, oh, 2nd of September. So it must have been on deadline day. He got released um, and we've brought him in on trial. He looks very, very good. He's got some excellent attributes. Um, and I think would I, I would like to bring him in. I'd like to get him um in on a uh, a free transfer definitely increases the the depth a little bit that probably means we can move on uh, Abdullahi Dukore who you know played a little bit last season not too much and won't get much of an opportunity this year he's obviously been a good servant uh, for Everton but um I think it's probably time for him to go uh, might also mean that Pablo Maya uh, gets a loan move I think you know his his uh uh, chances are going to be limited this year and we've got Anana in there and we're going to have Endombele as our uh, two players that can, can just slot in. Um, but obviously those sort of decisions don't need to be made till January. But anyway, let's uh, get ourselves in to the match. As I say, you know, we've made those couple of changes to to just freshen it up a little bit. I think rotation is, is definitely important. Um and and hopefully we can we can tinker away and, and give some people some first team exposure that you know haven't necessarily enjoyed uh, that level of of stuff recently. Um, uh, you know, against Brentford, a team we should be beating. We've just absolutely thumped Newcastle, so you would hope that we can go away to Brentford and and get a good result. Uh, hopefully, Dominic Calvert Lewin can rediscover. Some goal scoring form, you know, he's been back from his main injury for about a year now. This is where I'd be expecting him to to start to, to find his form again. Because if not, he can go. Um, you know, we've got Beto in there, we've got Martial, we've got Leonardo as a as a backup. So yeah, he he really needs to start performing. Uh, I would have to say, but. Uh, here come Brentford. Oh, good uh, interception from Smith Rowe. That could be an injury, though. I think it's going to be a red card for the Brentford player, Janelt, there. Yep, he's off. He's been sent off. Is Smith Rowe okay? I think he is. It looked nasty, but it's all right. Here's Rooney. Finds uh, Gullickson into the middle now. Brantway with the header, and it's just wide. But uh, this should be the start of us coming on top now. They're, they're down to 10 men. We've really got to try and and push on and and make that ad advantage stick. Here's uh, Ayer gets it to Holm now, and here's Jensen on the right hand side finds Holm again. Collins finds Jensen. Oh, good interception from John McGinn, and he's bursting forward now. It's Rooney. Rooney finds Gullickson. Here's Smith Rowe with a great chance. Oh, good save. It was uh, a bit of an unbalanced shot there from Emil Smith Rowe. You would feel like uh, Rooney would have uh, should have pushed forward a bit more with it. We've got another corner here, uh, but end of highlight, and I think that's going to take us up to half time, and indeed it does. Right, uh, don't lose faith. We're making chances. Let's uh, stick them in the back of the net. So we're going to stick with the same team for the first sort of 10 minutes of the second half and then maybe think about bringing Beto on. Maybe Martial on the left-hand side because uh, Smith Rowe seems to be having a little bit of a rough time of it, but uh, we've certainly seen him involved in some decent moves. Here's uh, Gullickson, finds uh, Rooney Bargy. Boy, oh, scores Rooney Bargy's third goal of the season. Lovely little ball through from Gullickson there, and Rooney Bargy sticks it into the back of the net, and it was uh, Ruben Sanchez that started all of that as well. Uh, Rooney found Gullickson, who found Rooney, and these two seem to be linking up like a treat. And it is a 1-0 to the Toffees. Fantastic. Right. Okay, 55 minutes gone. I do want to wait for another highlight just to give DCL one more chance, really, to go and get something. Here's McGinn. Finds Rooney Bargy again. Bargy makes it 2-0. And he is starting to look very, very good indeed. Struggled in his first couple of Premier League matches. But now does seem to be getting on uh, 
to those runs that just get him into very dangerous situations and uh, with both feet managing to stick it into the back of the net and it is now 2-0. Right, DCL is going to come off. Uh, we're going to put Beto on. Uh, Smithrow is going to come off for uh, Martial. And what else do we want to do? Um, you know what? I'm going to bring Mings on for Branthwaite and we're going to put him as an inverted fullback and see how he gets on in that role. You know, that could be somewhere that, that Mings plays a lot this year. Um, because, uh, you know, the opportunities are certainly limited elsewhere in the team. But, uh, yeah, this result moves us into the top four as it stands and we are starting to look very, very strong going forward we're looking very solid defensively you know almost untroubled in in some matches and that's that's got to be a good thing here's Maguire finds Ruben Sanchez on the right hand side what can he do with it gets it forward towards Rooney Bargy who uh, wasn't quite on the same wavelength here's Pinnock finds Collins it feels like we're going to win the ball back here and there it is Beto scores and that's his second goal. He's played about 40 minutes of football. And he's already scored two goals. Yeah, I think he's a bit of a cheat code <laughs> for this Everton side. Uh, really good to see, though, after a little injury that he's still on it. He's still sharp. Puts it into the back of the net. We're still going to protect him. You know, I don't want to throw him back into to starting until he is fully ready. Um, because we we cannot risk losing him, um, essentially. But, yeah, we can praise the team. They're doing incredibly well. And, uh, well, it looks like another big victory for us. Two very solid 3-0 victories as it stands. Mings gets it to Gullickson. And now here's uh, Martial. Finds Rooney and there's his hat-trick. And uh, he's now the second Rooney to have scored a hat-trick for Everton. Um, and hopefully he will last a lot longer than the original Wayne Rooney, of course, uh, spelt differently. Martial with the assist as well, so he's come on, he's made a difference. And uh, yeah, all things are, are looking good for Everton. He has uh, uh, Rooney Bar, she gets it to Gullickson. It is a wait. Now he has Garner. Gullickson, can he score? Oh, it hits the post. That was close. <laughs> he tried to curl it into the top corner. But a fabulous victory. 4-0 away from home at Brentford. That is no mean feat. It's a 10 out of 10 rating for Rooney Bargy. He was absolutely fantastic. Obviously, the red card helped us, but we took full advantage. And I tell you what, without European football this year, we are, you would imagine, going to be... Uh, in a very, very good position come the end of the season because we're going to manage to keep our team fresh. We're eight games unbeaten in the league, which stretches back to the last two games of last season. And really, if you look at that, other than that Luton uh, result, we have almost been unbeaten since uh, since March uh, with Bournemouth. So we're really taking this momentum into the new season. As I said, you know, a couple of disappointing results at the start of the year. But what we've done is is managed to turn that around. Four consecutive victories now make those two draws look excellent. And now we're on 14 points out of a possible 18. Uh, we're chasing Liverpool and Arsenal at the top of the league. Man United are keeping uh, pace with us. Man City are going to be up there as well. Um, Rooney Bargy, five goals already this season. Interestingly, Haaland isn't on there. He's uh, fifth in the league. Um, only has two more than Beto. I mean, Beto is, is probably going to be our best bet for a top goal scorer award. Emile Smith-Rowe third in the assists as well. So things are, things are coming up Everton. They really are. By the way, Jordan Pickford injured again. Seems like he's becoming a little bit um, injury prone. And you would say is is pretty much losing his number one position uh, to Meslier, who is looking better all the time. He's getting better every game. He's only 24. 
he's going to be somebody that uh, is there for a long time, I think, and uh, will become the number one uh, here at Everton. So let's have a look at when we're going to come back. Um, obviously, things are going to come back crashing, uh, crashing back down to earth very soon, you would imagine. Uh, we are going to be back for the Merseyside derby next time out um, and Leeds. That'll be a, a true test of how far we have come. We, of course struggled in the Merseyside derby last season it would be amazing if we can get one over Liverpool this year so if you have enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up down below subscribe for plenty more football manager videos and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye <laughs>